this is ninth part as far as my series of lectures is concerned in which we are trying to understand as to why we say cognitive offenses are serious offenses as compared to non cognitive offenses this can be explained by having illustration as far as first schedule of the criminal procedure code is concerned now all of you must be remembering if not have reference right from section 141 up to section 160 of the indian penal code this is the chapter which deals with offenses against public tranquility 141 defines what do you mean by an unlawful assembly 142 makes mention of being member of an unlawful assembly who is member and who is not member of an unlawful assembly whereas section 143 is the section to which you come across when you are reading first vertical column the first schedule of the criminal procedure code because that is the section which deals with or that is the section which lays down punishment for being member of an unlawful assembly second vertical column being member of an unlawful assembly namely the nature of the offense third vertical column is lays down one who can be charged as per section 143 of the indian penal code can be convicted by the court of law and the maximum punishment that can be inflicted by the court of law is 6 months imprisonment though the punishment is 6 months imprisonment fourth vertical column has made this offense or shown this offense or classified this offense as a cognizable offense as compared to this illustration let us start discussing some other part of the indian penal code by having reference to section 463 of the indian penal code which defines the offense of forgery in order to know section 463 of the indian penal code you must know section 464 of the indian penal code which deals with making a false document and then right from section 465 onwards are the sections which deal with punishment out of which this is a time for me to make mention refer to section 467 as far as first vertical column of the first schedule of the criminal procedure code is concerned section punishing the section that lays down punishment 467 for what second vertical column forgery of a valuable security and that when you read that you come to third vertical column where you read the maximum punishment that can be inflicted by the court of law as per section 467 is life imprisonment but then if you read the next vertical column namely the fourth vertical column you will find out that this is shown as a non cognizable offense being member of an unlawful assembly punishment is 6 months but that is cognizable offense forgery of a valuable security punishment is life imprisonment but that is shown as a non cognizable offense what is the reason the reason you can understand as to what is the potential danger as far as the nature of the offense is concerned so it is not the quantum of the punishment that determines whether it is a cognizable or non cognizable offense but it is impact of such an offense with respect to the society at large is taken into consideration by the legislature at the time of classifying offenses under two different heads namely cognizable and non cognizable offenses the other illustration would be read section 319 of the indian penal code which defines hurt section 320 defines what do you mean by grievous hurt section 321 defines the offense of voluntarily causing hurt and section 322 defines the offense of voluntarily causing grievous hurt whereas 
right from section 323 up to 338 of the Indian Bill Code are the sections which deal with punishment. Now when you refer to these sections as far as the punishment is concerned to which you will come across when you refer to first vertical column, the first schedule of the criminal procedure code. When the offence is that of voluntarily causing hurt, that is non cognizable offence and the offence of voluntarily causing grievous hurt is a cognizable offence. You can. This is by way of illustration and hence as you start going through the different provisions or different sections as far as Indian Penal Code is concerned by having reference to what only the first schedule of the criminal procedure code, you will immediately understand the importance of what? You will immediately understand the importance of distinction or classification as far as cognizable and non cognizable offences are concerned. With this now, this is a time for me to draw your attention to one more aspect. Though I told you that Anybody can set criminal law into motion is the basic principle of the criminal law. How one can set criminal law into motion entirely depends upon the nature of the offence. If it is cognizable, one can follow the procedure which is laid down as far as subclause 1 of section 154 of the criminal procedure code is concerned which deals with FIR. Whereas if it is non-cognizable offence, one has to follow the procedure which is laid down as far as subclause 1 of section 154 is concerned which deals with complaint to the magistrate. Are these the only ways in which it is possible for you to set criminal law into motion can be explained by having one more illustration. Namely, imagine a situation that your neighbor has committed the offence of bigamy as defined by section 494 of the Indian Penal Code. Bigamy is not an offence, it is an English term, but marrying during the lifetime of either spouse is made punishable as far as section 494 of the Indian Penal Code is concerned, for which you will have to refer to right from section 493 up to 498 are the sections which deal with what? These are offences relating to marriage. So tomorrow you come across a situation that somebody, somebody you know has committed an offence as defined by section 494. Now no offence should go unpunished is the basic principle of the criminal law. Hence you want to set law into motion, you do not know the nature of the offence, hence you go to the police station and want to set law into motion. The police officer is bound to tell you. As the nature of the offence is non cognizable I have neither right to arrest not to start with the investigation and then you are referred by him to go to the magistrate, you go to the magistrate. Now once you go to the magistrate and you want to lodge a complaint for the offence of bigamy which is committed by your neighbour, for which you may be having proof also, you may be having video cassette, recorded cassette too, but then when you go to the magistrate the magistrate is bound to tell you as I am bound by section 198 of the criminal procedure code. In case when the offences are relating to marriage, it is only the aggrieved person who can set criminal law into motion and you are not an aggrieved person for which we will have been, this is the time when we can understand the importance of right from section 190 up to 199 where you will try to understand what do you mean by taking cognizance of an offence but that is not the heading of the chapter conditions requisite to initiate the proceeding just introduction no doubt about it with which we will continue with our discussion as far as the next part of our series of lecture is concerned.